So, so I'm hoping that you will kind of act as a focus group for me, because I'm going to ask a lot of questions of you. And I, I hope you're willing to, to be open with me. Um, and feel free to put your, your ideas in the notes. I'm not requiring it by no, mo by no means. But as I ask these questions, I wonder if you will be open with me as I'm open with you. And as we talk about OER and sharing, I think an important question to ask is why do we share? Why sharing? And I think everybody that's probably at this conference has, has some experience with sharing. Probably a lot of people, uh, probably a lot of people here have uh, shared some great things. And I'm wondering really what you have shared. And, and I wonder really why you share, and maybe I should go a little bit into why I share. Uh, I share personally because I feel like being a person that comes from fortunate circumstances and you know, comparatively across the globe, I feel like I have a moral obligation to help other people. Uh, I worked with, I don't know if you guys know Steve Hargadon, I don't mean to to, he'll be talking to us next, but we were talking earlier today about the Global Education Conference. And this is, a, this is an online conference that Steve's put together. And last year was the first year. And how many different countries are represented? We were talking about this. Oh, you were talking about a different network. But uh, hundreds of different countries were represented in this conference for free. And I think those in other countries are just starving. They're starving for content. They're starving for education and resources. And I think it's, it's, it's really our job. I think, honestly, we have a responsibility to help them. Uh, like uh, was mentioned earlier in the keynotes this morning, the president will mention he will always say we want to be number one. And we do. But I think we should be number one at sharing. And by doing so, we can lift others. So why do I share? I've, I've gained a lot through sharing. I share because I think it's my responsibility. I also share because of this, because it's easy. Uh, this is a quote from Dave uh, Cormier. I'm not sure if I'm saying his, his name right. Uh, but he is an early pioneer in open ed. And he said a couple years ago, he said, our blogs are now less megaphone and more like 21st century lockers. And that's been true for me, although I've been a horrible blogger in the last year or two. Uh, but I share on Twitter, I share on blogs, I share on other social networks. And honestly, one of the reasons I share is because it's a place to store my thoughts. It helps me, writing helps me to figure out what I'm thinking. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to my blog to find stuff that I've written uh, to share with others. So it's been a nice repository. So I'd like, I'd like to get some, some feedback from you, and I want, I'd like you to consider, if you wouldn't mind, for about two minutes here, consider the most meaningful creation you've ever publicly shared. Think about it for a minute. The most meaningful creation, a piece of content, maybe it's a, a piece of audio, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a blog or a piece of writing. Uh, maybe it's D106 radio earlier on, we, we, we heard about that. Um, how did you share it? Why did you share? And what impact did sharing have on you and on others? Anybody care to share? Meaningful to me or meaningful to the world? Sure. No, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> or, or you want either. Uh, how about meaningful to you? I'm an industry musician and I've shared stuff through um, mp3.com and YouTube and things like that. And, um, I live in a s small community, and I don't have op opportunity to share other ones. So it's been important that way. That's good. Did you ever hear that? It's an amateur musician, he shared his, his music through MP3.com, through other avenues. How did that sharing impact you? I got feedback from the whole world. You know, of, of very educated people mm -hmm. who gave positive and negative feedback. That so that affect future creating? <clears throat> Steve, you rose your hand. I feel like I'm very much a sharer right now. 
But I can remember that I almost was sort of forced into it. It was my first big community project, Classroom 2.0. And um, I, I ended up taking a job with Ning. And because of that, I was evangelizing the platform. And, and sort of intriguingly enough, I don't think I would have done that on my own. But once I did it, it felt like um, the benefits to me personally, in terms of engagement, my own personal engagement, uh, were so great that I was really grateful for that experience. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I think, uh, you know, fundamentally, as, as a woman, you know, um, I'm, I'm a mother of two small children. And when you have, you know, most meaningful creation, they are the most meaningful thing to me right now, if, if it's a sure. thing. But, you know, giving, um, you know, my, my children, you think of labor, you know, how did you share it? And you went through that process. But, but the why is, is greater than yourself, um, you know, giving to, you know, the extended family. And then the impact is to be seen. You know, I have a 15-month-old and a 3-year-old. And it's exciting to me to see, uh, you know, how what, what I and my husband created, you know, how that will impact the world. Fantastic. So somebody over here? Yeah. yeah. I wrote a book once, and when the copyright lapsed, they just asked for the, or when the publishing said put it out of print, I asked for the rights back, and they made the digital version free, and then I just recorded myself reading it put it on iTunes as an audio book. And at random moments, I'll be, uh, it's a book to teenagers. And at random moments, I'll be giving a speech to teenagers, and someone will come after me and be like, hey, that story's not your story. I heard that story on iTunes. You know, awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm plagiarizing. Yeah. That's great. Hey, what's the name of the book? Uh, I lost my phone number. Can I have yours? <laughs> I like that. Um, I came to the States, you can hear by my accent, I'm from somewhere across the waters. Um, I grew up in South Africa and I've been teaching Afrikaans in the States. So, being involved with less commonly taught languages, I developed an open site for Afrikaans initially and then realized, you know, I really like to do that for all less commonly taught languages. So I created openlanguages.net, which specifically goes there. And I've asked myself that question, why do I invest so much in this and I'm not getting a penny for it and it's just open and sharing. And it's actually more of a spiritual thing to me. And that is, I realize life is short. If you've got a mark to be made, and that you really want to bless humanity with it, do it. Don't wait. You know, uh, you're going to be expiring real soon, and then, um, you know, you might discover, you know, and, and I realize that, you know, uh, our time is really short. If, you, if you've got something unique that you want to bless humanity with, jump on it and share. Don't reserve and all this... When I want to make money and so forth, you realize, oh, you've got it wrong. It's about money, isn't it? You know, um, and, 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 and your love for, the, for humanity and so forth. Is, so I've just uh, been spiritually driven to, to share what I've got instead of having this, I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> life is short. That's the pessimistic view, right? This is the pessimistic crowd. And sure, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Let's do one more right in the back over here. Uh, I'm a pretty open person. I share almost everything I do. But the most meaningful one was a college lecture that I uh, blogged. And I thought it helped me. Well, one, it helped me do two things. One, I, I thought about the material more and more in depth and helped me synthesize and actually learn it better. And two, it got my dad off my back because he was always pestering me, what are you learning at that college of yours anyway? There you go. <laughs> Transparency. <laughs> That's good. So if you didn't get a chance to share yours, you're welcome to share it in the notes. Again, those are, those are public. So... So be careful what you share and, and why, why you, uh, your motives for sharing. Anybody know who this person is? Let's, let's get into some, some difficult questions now. Anybody know who this person is? It's not George Washington. I'd say it's Arnold Jefferson. Arnold? Yes, that is Benedict Arnold. What is the story of Benedict Arnold? So we're talking about the 1700s, right? Uh, Revolutionary War. He was a general in the colonial army. Uh, he was privy to a lot of inside information. They were open with him. And he took that openness and made them pay. So there's, there's one of our questions. When it comes to competition, if they, whoever they might be, 
if they have more honors students than we have students, are we really safe to share? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. If it's a competitive world, and you know, we're in it, it, it's so competitive now anyway, even here in the United States, right, in education. Uh, we've got public education, we've got private education, we've got charter schools fighting for, for dollars, public dollars. And then here in Utah, if you're not from Utah, you may not be familiar with Senate Bill 65. That's a new bill that came out that said that all, all public students can now have the option to attend any online Utah online high school or credit. And if they choose to go to another online school, then their local district will need to pay for them to attend. And I think the, the dollar amount somewhere at 750 or so. It's the, the, the WPU. So their district would, would lose money for those students that are, that are attending these other, other schools. So if they have more honor students than we have students, if, if people are fighting for, for our money, why should we share? That's one dilemma I think we need to consider. Any comments, thoughts, or questions on that? I'll just throw a brief one. I'm talking tomorrow, and this is really part of my thing too. They, the money makers and the for-profit people, are well organized, and they can pay to do marketing, to hire great content developers, and so forth, and to really, um, the money drives it, and, and, and we see ourselves kind of vulnerable. The way that can, we can do it is by really getting organized. Because as you look at free software, by being organized, you can really do some magic. But if you're not organized, if you divide it, you are very vulnerable. Yes, I agree. There's another hand over here. Uh, again, this is a very deep question. I think it's a spiritual question, too. And it has to do whether we see ourselves as an individual separate from our environment, or if we see ourselves and our organization as a part of something larger. And if we take that latter view, then I believe we will find practical ways to do it, as, uh, for example, what was just mentioned. Good answer. Thanks. Um, I think this has been alluded to rather than said, but um, in a research context, your intellectual property is pretty much the only thing that keeps you employed sometimes. Um, so it's very difficult to create a culture in which people feel comfortable giving it away. There's one more over here. Oh, just, um, I don't know, I think a lot of that has to do with developing good institutions to make the whole idea like this common resource work. I mean, if you imagine the, like, you know, there's a common grazing old brand, like you're not going to spend all your time, like, making that productive when everyone else is going to reap the benefits. You want, like, if you have some, like, ways to keep it, I don't know, guarantee or there's no, there's no easy answer. Well, so we've, we've talked a little bit about culture and creating a culture of sharing and how critical that is. I think important, an important aspect of that culture is the willingness to attribute the work of others. And I think that you were alluding to that in the back. When that happens, sharing can be beneficial all around. Could you share why you chose the word safe? <clears throat> well... Um, I don't know why I chose the word safe, except in thinking of Benedict Arnold. I'm not sure how safe it was for them to share information with him, even though they weren't knowing that, that it would eventually harm them. I think that's a potential, uh, it's a, it's a potential roadblock we're going to run into all the time. Um, you know, I, I, thinking more about this question, is it safer really to share with our friends? Or is it safer to share with our enemies, or people that don't, we don't even know? Uh, in Benedict Arnold's case, I think it was not very safe to share with friends. Uh, so it's a tough thing, and, and, and I agree that it's a spiritual question. This is one that lies, uh, the answer lies deep within people. Uh, it lies deep within the people of our country, as an example. If we're going to be number one in sharing, uh, that means a lot. It means we're going to need to change some things. It complicates it too that there are different levels of sharing, right? So if I just blog about what I'm doing in my class, they could come and say, oh, I'm open about what I'm doing, right? But that's very different than taking my actual lesson plan, putting those online, 
or taking those and putting them in a package, doing actual work to make it usable by other people. Like, there are all these different mm -hmm. phases, right? And I think sometimes we get caught up in, oh, do I share or do I not share? Rather than, you know, at what level am I sharing? How much work am I willing to put into this and become vulnerable to other people as a result? Good. In the back, no. okay. um, Also, with my experience, it's not only a question of teachers or administrators, it's even students. Um, I have a website that allows students to collaborate on coursework, and the primary reason they don't contribute is that they're worried about giving up their competitive advantage. If I have the best notes, then I'm going to get an A, and I don't want you to get an A. It makes mine less valuable. As a teacher, how important is, is it to change that mindset? And it's really changing culture. It's, it's incredibly difficult to do, but I think it is worthwhile. Here and then back. And, and, and going back to a couple of comments over here, it really depends on what you share. And if you're at a research one, and you're going to get tenure right. or not based upon your research, well, you're not going to be giving that away to everyone. But if you're you know, teaching at a 100 level course, and you create a lesson that you think is pretty cool, and you want to share that, you know, it's a different question. Good stuff. Um, I was looking at that from a state government perspective. So I was thinking about how we typically don't incentivize collaboration. So there is not really a been more reward, I guess, for competition in some ways and individual outcomes than there have been for um, collaboration and collective outcomes. So this is almost a policy issue too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It certainly could be for me anyway. <laughs> There's an emerging question is when do you share and when do you compete? And that's not easy to answer. No. I don't think that competition is something that can be eliminated in any environment. So maybe we should flip the question and we should start asking ourselves how we can develop an ecosystem in which competing for openness is, re is recognized and evaluated and valued. So that actually you can actually compete, but for being open and free. Well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, we're already sharing. I mean, if you're college faculty and you publish, hopefully your work will be either showing up in a database that thousands, if not millions of libraries will have access to, where faculty and students would see your research and cite from it. Um, the other thing is that people, faculty, are already publishing um, online journals, which are open access, available through any Google Scholar search. So this is already sharing, that's, and that's totally free, um, because that's not getting indexed by um, database companies. So anybody who isn't a paying student or an employed faculty member of a university to access this. There are some conferences, not this one unfortunately, where they archive people's 